Welcome to the shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera, and today we're going to be learning how to fix a broken chain when you're out on the trail. This is the second episode in our On Trail Fix It series. If you haven't seen episode number one, which is all about fixing a flat, which is probably the most common problem that you're going to have, you can click the link that is right up there. For this task, you will need to remove the cat from your tools. Step one. You will need a multi-tool that has a chain break. If you don't have a multi-tool with a chain break, you will need both a multi-tool and a chain break. And you will also need the appropriate quick link for your chain. Now it's time to head to the trail. And here we have a mountain biker in distress. He appears to have broken his chain. Let's see if we can help him out. Okay, broken chains, probably the second most common mechanical after flat tires, which we talked about in last week's video. So this is what a broken chain looks like. It took us a while to get here because we didn't actually have an authentically broken chain. Mackie has set it up so that it should break, but it's refusing to break. <laughs> Try not to like smash your face when this actually breaks. We are going to show you two ways of doing this. First way is using a quick link, which is by far the superior, easier, less annoying way to fix a chain. I'm pretty sure like everything that is 10 speed and up has quick links. Nine speed might as well. Get a quick link. It will save your butt. And then learn how to use it because it turns out you don't know how to use it. Might not help that much. And just a little PSA, if you've recently switched to 12 speed, you will need to get a new quick link. Um, just like the 11 speed chains don't work in a 12 speed system, the 11 speed quick links do not work on a 12 speed chain. However, they are compatible between brands. So a Shimano quick link will work on a SRAM chain and vice versa. So it is important though to make sure you have a quick link that is for the right amount of speeds. Luckily, Mackie is prepared and he has his quick link here on his mule tool. This is another reason we love these little things as you can get to your quick links very easily. However, just having a quick link is not enough. You have to also have a multi-tool with a chain break. If you do not have a multi-tool with a chain break, start walking. First thing we are gonna do is not put this on the ground. <laughs> I did that once. The first time I broke a chain in a race, I was like, I don't know what to do. And I got all panicky and I tried to install my quick link and it flew off into the leaves and then I couldn't find it. I'm gonna put it in my pocket cause I have apron pockets. I also have pockets on my baggy shorts here. So that's where that's gonna go. In fact, actually the, probably the best protocol would just be to not get it out until you've sorted out your chain. So basically when you break a chain with force, like as in not with a chain break, it's it all bent. So this, little section is donezo. So this outer link is done, Dun basically. Done, so game over. And it turns out the outer link is what the quick link replaces anyway. That is the important part to understand is where the quick link is gonna fit. However, if you break a chain, replace the chain, right? I mean, you shouldn't, it probably will break again. Like there's usually a reason. Unless you just put out a hundred million watts one time and you're never gonna do it again. That'd be a shame to be able to put out 100 million watts once, but never do it again. Anyway, so this is why the chain break is relevant, is you have to get this off. I don't know if there are other ways of doing it. I kind of don't think so, though. No. This is a cool, nifty little multi-tool that we found on the side of the trail once. And basically, you put the chain in here so that these little hooks are on either side of the part that you're trying to break and then you screw it in. I do think these are like these multi-tool chain breaks, like you need to proceed a bit cautiously because it's easy to get crooked. The key is that the pushing part right there is right in the center of the pin that you are trying to push out. And it's going straight. Because if you have it twisted, you can bend this. You can also break the chain break tool. Then you're walking. Then you just keep, there it goes. Bonk. We are gonna push this pin all the way out because we have a quick link. <laughs> Stay tuned for part two, where we don't do that. 
Also, real quick, just in case you've never sort of played with a chain or experimented with a chain before. You haven't experimented with chains. <laughs> the way a chain is put together is that there are inner plates and outer plates. You can see inner, outer, inner, rollers. outer. Rollers are on the inside, and then the pins go through outer plate, through inner plate, through the pin, through the inner plate, back to the outer plate, and then they line up flush with the chain, and that's what holds everything together. So by popping that pin out, Sid just removed the other side of that link, and it had already broken. There's, there's the pin that she popped out. There's the broken link, and so that you're going to put in your pocket. In your other pocket, your just so you don't get confused. All right, and now we're gonna put the chain back on the bike. So I think now might be a good moment for a little talk about like how to work on your bike on the trail. There's a couple different options. You can flip it upside down. I think there's some value in learning how to work on your bike upside down because sometimes that is the only option. You can leave it upright, have a friend hold it. You can hang the seat on a branch. We do not, unless we want to stand in the brush, we don't have good branches right now. Or you leave it oh, lying yeah. on the ground for this, for this task. Yeah. I guess I was thinking more generally though. If you have a rear flat tire, I feel like the fastest way to fix a flat with a rear flat tire is to flip your bike over, pull the wheel off. Assuming you're putting a tube in. True, the fastest way to slowly fix a flat. <laughs> the fastest slow way to fix a flat. So I think you had a little, uh, a little saying. I know, I was literally just trying to remember my saying. Around the hill, over the fence, and down the waterfall. Over the hill. Through the woods to grandmother's house we go. So what is the first step? Shift this back into the highest gear. Hardest gear. Yeah, so you want the least amount of chain tension on your derailleur so that it's here, like all the way in the hardest gear. This is why I think it is helpful to practice working on your bike in situations that are not ideal, i.e. not in a bike stand. Cause I'm actually like feeling confused about how this goes through the derailleur now that I don't have a bike stand. But I think we go around. So this is the going around part. Yeah, so first you went around the hardest gear of the cassette mm -hmm. and then you're going around the jockey the wheel. Top pulley, yeah, or jockey wheel. That metal piece right there, you have to go over that. If you go under that, when you are putting your chain back on, your chain will go the yeah, entire time, and it's annoying. so annoying. And then you know you did something terribly wrong. There's the fence, and down the waterfall, I believe, was yeah. the final part. Around the hill, over the fence, down the waterfall. Yeah, I actually will say for putting a chain on, having the bike just lying down like this, pretty solid way of doing it. Until we get to here when I need to pedal. Also like a reminder, if you have a clutch derailleur to take your clutch off, that makes it easier to pull the derailleur like this, basically. One thing that makes all of this easier is if you don't have it on the front chain ring, because then you have chain slack. We will need it on the front chain ring later, but you're yes. right, this is a good call there, for this. Yeah. Same thing on the other side. Okay, so as you can see, there's an arrow on this. It looks like it's pointing backwards. That is because we're doing this on the bottom. If you wanna connect it on the top, then the arrow will be pointing forward. And then we're gonna line this up so the pins go into the bigger part and then try to tug on it enough so that you can get the bike upright and get the chain back on without it falling off and losing it in the bushes. So I'm gonna get this back on the front chain ring, which is annoying because it's a narrow wide. Basically, I wanna back pedal this until this is like right here, right? Or this is right here. No, on the top. It needs to be anywhere between the cassette and the front chain ring on the Why top. We so we're gonna backpedal this. Something is not right. I think you're not on your rear. Oh yeah, no kidding. Here. There we go. <laughs> Troubleshooting. We're gonna backpedal this puppy. I'm gonna put the pedal right here. I'm gonna grab my rear brake. As you can see, our chain link is there. And it is not connected yet. Do not ride away with it in this status. It will probably drop right off the chain ring. Now we're gonna step on the pedal with the rear brake on. Voila. Aren't you glad you have a quick link? Broken chain scenario number two, you do not have a quick link. You have to do this the old fashioned way. You're doomed, just give up. <laughs> it's really not that hard. 
the first thing to do is just do a little bit of thinking about how you're going to do this because this one's broken this link is done but if you just take off that link then you have these two knocking at each other. And that's why having a quick link is superior because the way we're gonna show you how to do this now does involve taking a link out of the chain, which means especially if you're on a full suspension bike, you risk either not being able to get into your easiest gears or breaking the chain again when you're in an easy gear and you have a, a um, compression of the bike that lengthens the chain line. That's just something to be aware of if you have to do this, like be conscious of what gear you're in, be conscious of how you're riding. As I was saying, this cannot connect to this, so we're going to have to take off two links. So basically you have to release one side of the next outer plate. Exactly, okay. so that it can go into the inner. And then the other trick with this is you want the pin to be poking out almost all the way on one side, specifically on the side that will then be pointing out on your bike. Facing out on the bike. Right. Okay. Because otherwise you can't get your tool in there and then you're like, huh, now what? This chain can go either direction. Um, however, you are using a Shimano 12 speed chain, the side with the writing is the side that goes out. So you want the pin to be poking out the side with the writing. I'm afraid I don't know about older chains, so you're just gonna have to Figure that out for yourself. That's not good enough. That's an outer to match with our inner. So we are going to grab our chain brake tool, pop it in here. Same protocol as earlier, caution. Make sure everything is straight before you start like tightening, walloping on it. There it goes. So basically, More. The goal is to make sure that this pin right there does not go all the way out. So I would just pause there yeah, and try it. Can, if you yeah. can get it out, great. If not, <laughs> go farther. Yeah, there's a pretty easy way to tell if this pops out. Nope. <laughs> well, try bending it to the side and see if it'll come out. There we go. Cool. Trash pocket. And then same protocol for putting the chain on as earlier. Don't mind me. I will just be here all day untangling this chain. I personally have just always done it in the bottom and kind of prefer that, but I don't know, we just don't have strong opinions about that. Someone does and someone will leave a comment, but like, you know what? A lot of things can be done in more ways than one. That's what I think a lot of people don't realize. They think this is the only way to do something. And in truth, I'm kind of like, if it works for you, you know, it might be easier to do this with the side that you didn't just poke the pin out of. Do it on the side with the inner plate so that it's a little smaller. Yeah. Basically, we're going to reverse what we did earlier, which just means we're going to do a little bit of wiggly. It may be that you actually want to push that pin out slightly farther. You yeah. just don't want to risk popping it all the way out. I'm probably feeling nervous, but I think we did it right to the line. That's like basically all the way out, but not falling out. Cool, so that's flush, so you'll definitely be able to get the other side in. Though it's still not all that easy, to be honest. Okay, and then basically you're gonna reverse the process and you're gonna poke this guy back in. Being very careful to what? Not go too far out the other side. You want to be flush like the, the ones, ones next to it are. Otherwise, you will run into problems down the road. Like breaking your chain, again. As you can see, this takes a lot longer than the quick link which is why we recommend quick links whenever possible. Okie dokie, a little farther. Yeah, we're not quite flush, little. I actually think I did a pretty good job. The other thing is sometimes I feel like it's very stiff. Mm -hmm. This one is not that bad, actually, but you can kind of like wiggle side to side like this to get that play back in, which you will want to do. Otherwise there'll be a big like clonk every time it like, goes over the top there, like every time it needs to bend, essentially. We're gonna pop this back on our chain ring, being conscious of the narrow wide situation. There it is. So the final step is to put your clutch back on and ride away. Thank you. And this is how to fix a chain on the trail in one minute. 
Assuming you're carrying the correct quick link for your chain, use the chain brake to remove the broken outer link so you're left with inner links on both sides of your chain. Shift your bike into the hardest gear, then run the chain through the derailleur and around the chain ring. Remove the chain from the chain ring to give yourself some slack, then insert both halves of the quick link, making sure the arrow is pointing forward if you're connecting the chain above the chain stay, and backwards if you're connecting it below the chain stay. Partially connect the quick link, then position it so that it is above the chain stay. Now position your crank so that one pedal is forward, hold the rear brake, and step on the pedal to finish connecting quick link. If you don't have a quick link, use your chain brake to remove both the broken outer link and the next inner link so that you have an outer link on one side of the chain and an inner link on the other. Make sure not to push the pin all the way out. Now run the chain through the derailleur and around the chain ring. Give yourself some slack by dropping the chain to the inside of the chain ring, then place the inner link inside the outer link and use your chain brake to push the pin back in until it is flush with the outer plate.